Hello, it's me, Jack Opium. Welcome along. We're back here looking at some more in case. This will be episode 27. Uh, we have been, well, we're in the Magellan station. We're in, we're on floor, uh, underground floor seven, so minus seven. We've taken a task to go and check out, or at least look for one of these guys' brothers. Uh, I think he might be down here in the reactor corridors. So there was a little bit of a puzzle to do at the end of last episode. So check that out if you like kind of e easy puzzles, man. Easy puzzles. Um, so yeah, we are down here in the ventilation. Oh, he's flagged as an enemy. Oh, okay. So... So let's see what happens. There you go. He wants to fight us. Wonder if he will turn out because look, he's unnamed. He's he's listed as Orange We employee. So will he uh, turn out to be that guy's brother? Who knows? But let's find out. Uh, and we are going to find out by shooting him. That's how we find out things. <laughs> Someone touched us? Covered our place with their scent? Okay, and then with the the final point, we're just gonna move over it. There are traces and fractals. Traces and fractals. Great, let's just go and punch him in the face. You can stick your fractals. How many do we have? AP2. Okay, so we could just jab him a couple of times. Uh, that's good enough. <laughs> Make sure it's back on me. Just turn this down again. So cigarettes... I mean, they're not worth a lot. They're not worth as much as like dope. But I don't. I still don't really want to take take cigarettes. Although, I mean, we can't trade them. So maybe they'll just sit in the in the tool belt. I don't know. Some duct tape. What else is in here, man? Boxes. Okay, some matches to light our cigarettes on fire. I think that's the way it works, right? You get a cigarette and then you light it on fire with your with your matches. Is that right? Oh no, it's a deed orange wing employee. Oh no, maybe it's his brother. Exploring the tunnels, you soon find or found the missing person. Yeah, I suppose that does work. I'm just, I'm gone insane, but they're dead. Uh, a lockpick and some dope, which we will be using as stuff for sale oh poor guy that says brother oh no i need to stop doing that i keep like trying to be affected okay so that's a tiny small level there attention what So yeah, sorry to uh, sorry to tell you, but your brother carked it, my friend. Hello again. Good luck. 
Well, what? Again? Tell him about the afflicted inside the van. Link obviously thinks you're an imbecile. That's some baloney. He says, what about Harold? Answer that you found the body. Sorry, dude. He is mcdedificated. Okay, let's try this uh, one more time. Let's step up. We're going to turn off the buzzer. Turn off the backlight. Enable power saving. So that's seven. Yeah, this is my stupid. I think we're allowed to start generation two, right? You enter the command. The display gauge is shudder. The grid loses five kilowatts, which are necessary to maintain operation of the converter. However, as soon as the converter ramps up, it immediately produces 10 kilowatts of additional power. All right. Uh, so then we would turn on the cooler. Uh, there you go. Which we've done in the past. And then we would start the first reactor. You enter the command. The display gauge is shut up. The grid loses 7 kilowatts. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, there you go. Pull the first lever. Let's pull the second lever. You don't get a shock, but judging by the unchanged indicators, nothing has happened. Although the terminal is now properly configured, a malfunction in the grid is preventing you from supplying power to the emulator systems. Probably the wiring on the mechanical floor is to blame. Yeah. Okay, so move away, right, then we talk to Clayton, right, tell him that the thing's all on, you may be up, blah, 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 blah. we fixed it, right, okay, the blue goes to the terminal and study the indicators uh, and figures on the screen, he turns back to you, if I got the diagnostics correct, you need to visit the mechanical floor, i.e. where we just were. <laughs> it could be the wiring, but there's a 99% power... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> words. English words. All right, so he gives you the fuses. Awesome. That's where we get the fuses from doing that. So then we would head back over here. Slip down. It looks like it was installed. Uh, there you go. Fuses. Change the fuse. You extract the melted fuse and insert a new one. There you go. It's updated with a bunch of stuff. Pull the second switch. And energize the emulator. You pull the second switch. And the indicators respond with a wave of green. Another dead one lights up on the panel. It's done. The emulator, in quotation marks, is fully powered. Why in quotation marks? We've been calling it an emulator for all this time. Are you telling me it's now not an emulator? The electrician greets you with a long, firm handshake. Everything is working again, he says. I'm so grateful. Okay, we'll show him the fuses. He frowns as he examines the melted device, but this is either stupidity, gross negligence, or malfeasance. This is a 400 ampere fuse. No wonder it's blown. Uh, the blue returns the items. Do you work with Henrietta, he says. Then you should be the one to tell her about this find. I also strongly advise you to contact Mr. Vares. Head of the Blue Wing at Magellan. I rely on you entirely. Okay, we'll talk to Veyers. It says waste no time then. Okay, so Veyers, the Veyers system. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's a notice there. A brand new glossy poster with information about escalating stages of radiation sickness. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, let's go to floor above, floor six, or floor minus six, I should say. That's how six is above minus seven, because we're underground. Uh, and then there's, from what I remember, he's over here, right? Yeah, look, there's Langlois, and yeah, there's, there's Vayers. Let's talk to him, see what he's got to say for himself. He looks at you, moves over and pats the chair next to him, inviting you to sit. Ask him what a man in his position is doing in this place. <laughs> Accuse him of sabotaging. Shall we just come straight out with it? <laughs> Uh, the head of Blue Wing's droopy face expresses a strong feeling of anxiety. Yeah, he does have a bit of face droop there. Uh, Why would you speak to me? That way he says, accusing me of things. Well, because I'm a silver. I outrank you, man. I buy everything according to forms. Whatever parts are requested, I purchase them. Why would you even say that? He shakes his head unhappily and takes a deep draught of beer. Uh, there you go, we can shove the blown fuses in his face. Yeah, that's understandable, all right. I see you're a reasonable person, so I'm going to make you a reasonable offer. What would you say if I gave you 500 combons and agreed to hush this up? Give me 700, man. The blue winces and clicks his tongue, but nevertheless counts out 700 combons for you. The blown fuse instantly disappears into his pocket. There you flaming go. Okay, so I've no idea what to do at the end of that quest. I am going to have to do some reading off camera. I'm really not sure. I have looked around the internet previously and I can't loom and figure it out. So... Uh, it might just, well, it has to get done because it's part of the overarching story, right? Um, so instead of finishing that off, I think we're going to do something else. We're going to take a look at this position here, which is the Kaleidoscope Project. This is what it looks like. There's the, it's another bunker. We have to go and have a look at old uh, Kingsley Aimless. Showed us how to get there or told us he wants us to investigate that place. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, one thing I, ooh, hello. Uh, not like that. What did I just look at? <laughs> yeah, reputation. Who's that? Reputation with Phalanx. Yeah, Phalanx doesn't like us. The committee is okay. We've got a good reputation in Picnic. A little bit good with Fops, who are some kind of gang, right? And then Carmine Heights as well. Yeah, but yeah, I can see a couple of... Uh, yeah. Guards. Lookouts. Enemies. Uh, so, I think instead of going that way, we're going to try and head up this direction. Just make sure that there's no anomalies hanging around. Yeah, we are still, we're somewhat hungry. We could do with some sleep. Grab all of his stuff. Ooh, there's uh, more. Uh, but then it kind of like disappears off. Oh, there's an ammunition box. Okay. Uh, with nothing in it. <laughs> That's handy. Uh, so let's get back on course. Yeah, I'm wondering if they're the only two people. I can't see anybody else, so perhaps they are the only two people. 
Uh, we can't really sneak because we're in our uh, in our uh, com shell. Let's see how close we can get. There you go. This is where we are. Um, so. Uh, I think it is just with two level 14 lookouts. <laughs> yep, he suspects something, all right. Uh, we miss. Okay, punches us from behind. We do need to rest up as well. We're starting to get mildly fatigued. Okay, so next up is uh, Crump. Uh, we've got one AP left, so that's enough for a quick jab. Uh, let's not put him down, no, unfortunately. Okay, so let's see what you can do, Yoko. Bit of a shame to waste that, but what can you do? Take these creeps downtown, bros. Who are you talking to? You're the only one here. Everyone else is dead. <laughs> and she jumps in. Oh, knocks me down. Oh, there's some more peeps. Okay, one more peep. Okay, that's bad. Being knocked down, I kind of remember being quite a bad thing, right? Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we can't jab again because it's on a timer, so. Uh, not in the firing line, unfortunately. Uh, so let's just take this person out uh, and then reload. And it just leaves us with two APs. Yeah, I don't know how to... I can't remember how to change the angles here. Okay. Oh no, is she attacking us or is she attacking Crump? Okay, I get back up. That's nice. Uh, and only one one AP, unfortunately. Ah. Okay, so Crump puts her down, uh, and then is she in the firing line. She is. Great. Uh, although... Ah, yeah. Okay, so... We're going to have to take care of the snipper. Okay, there's another person. Okay, this is... Uh, oh gosh, this is getting bad. Okay, crump. Yeah, the only problem is we've only got a 50% 
success rate. So we're going to like miss half of all of our Ouch. Okay, he misses quite a few times. And it looks like they are spreading their damage around, which is perfectly fine by me. Okay, Crump just start pounding this guy. You're dead, asshole. <sighs> oh, unfortunately, we have to reload again. <laughs> That's the end of him. Uh, and unfortunately, we can't now. Anybody else? Anybody else? Ah, we take a um, gut full of buckshot. Can we shoot this guy again? Oh. Yeah, see, missing once every every second shot ain't good. We missed there as well. Okay, she shot the Krumpmeister. Uh, and then, can she take this girl out? No, not with the first shot. Oh well. Let's start moving up. Okay, so the next round, uh, we start with AP9 and we need four, right? So we've got five APs. Yeah, in your frigging face. Um, so yeah, we took quite a lot of damage there, um, which ain't good, but I'm pretty sure we can like... Uh, we can just heal up, right? Uh, hmm. Okay, so we don't need a bandage. What is it? Where's my med kit? <laughs> Okay, that sounds like the Doomsday Whistle. Uh, so that's how we know the bombs are falling. I'm going to tidy up around here. I'm going to heal up and just take care of looting all of these bodies. And this is Friday's episode, man. So have yourselves a great weekend. And I'll see you back here on Monday where we will take care of business in another bunker. We're like bunker busters. All right. Thanks for watching. Please do leave a like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more in case or you want to see more role playing or strategy gaming in general. All right. Thanks. Bye for now.
they, they seem contradictory is my question. And when something comes up that's contradictory, my brain instinctively tries to understand it. <laughs> oh, Mike. Let me tell you about a man called Alex Kurtzman.